Hello and welcome back to Beckler Guitars and Repairs. Uh, today we're going to be checking out an SG. This is an SG special. This is a limited run from Guitar Center in uh, a very cool color. This one's called Blue Mist. Let's check it out. <laughs> So first of all, I came in this very cool uh, gator skin style case. These are Canadian made cases. Um, yeah, they made these in like the 2000s, I think late 90s. Uh, they're very nice cases. This one has the very white, nice interior. And it looks like there's some extra knobs in there. And some extra strings. But yeah, these cases are great. They uh, they seem to last a long time, and they've got that faux gator kind of scale pattern on there, and the latches are always good. Whenever I see one of these cases, they're in good shape, and they don't fall apart too easy. So those are great cases. Good year for cases. And then we've got the guitar on the bench over here. So yeah, this is a, a blue mist finish, they call it. So it's kind of a metallic, almost like a Pelham blue, but a little bit different. So it's got that uh, shiny coat underneath, and then uh, kind of a blue color on top. So yeah, it does have that metallic sheen, and uh, it's a pretty interesting color. I think it looks great. Another cool feature on these guitars is an ebony fingerboard. So. Yeah, they do not put ebony in a lot of Gibson USA guitars. So when they do, it's kind of a big deal. So that's really cool that this guitar has the ebony. Um, it's also got mother of pearl inlays. It's got only three small dots for inlays on the whole guitar. So usually Gibsons will have dots at the third, the fifth, the seventh, the twelfth, so on. But this one only has dots on the 5th and on the 12th, but they are real mother of pearl. Another cool feature is a bone nut. Yeah, that's a, a real bone nut on there. Again, not used too often in Gibson USA models. Um, you've got the truss cover and the Gibson painted on logo, which is kind of different. They used a different color there, which is neat. And this one has the 490R, 490T pickups. We just did a review on a guitar with those, and they're great pickups. They're kind of um, lower output, vintage style, PAF sounding pickups. And uh, yeah, they're, they sound really great. And yeah, the guitar is in really good shape. Um, I got this guitar for a screaming deal. Um, because of one thing I'll show you in a second here. And here's the back. Again, really good shape. There's a little bit of buckle worming on the back here. Another really cool thing about this finish is it has a red finish underneath. I confirmed that I checked when I took off the, uh, the cavity cover here and uh, I checked under the pick guard. Um, the base coat on the guitar is red, and then I don't know if they had to do that for the metallic style or what the reasoning is or if that's just the primer coat or whatever, but uh, when this guitar relics or chips or fades or cracks or dings, it has a red <laughs> undercoat. So this is going to look really interesting as it relics. As little scratches get out of it and pieces get out of it, you're going to see the red underneath and it's going to look pretty cool. And the neck is nice and clean, no scratches or dings anywhere. This has got a, a chunkier neck profile, I can already tell by feeling it. It's more like a 50s. So I do enjoy SGs with a chunkier neck. So, so here's the reason why I got this guitar for a song. It had a large crack in the neck. We can see it here. 
So, yeah, um, the crack was pretty bad when I got it. You could, uh, you could flex the crack open, meaning if you put pressure on the headstock, the crack would open. So what I did is, after I bought it, um, with a significant discount because of the crack, uh, and this was uh, the guy's price, I paid his price because it was wild. Um, so I got home and I fixed this crack right away. I'm going to explain a little later in the video how I did that, but just having a look now, you can see it's nice and sealed and closed and it's been tested. I've put a lot of uh, pressure on there and there's no way that's opening up anymore. So it's totally stable and uh, just a little cosmetic uh, remnant of what used to be. But yeah, you can even see the red coming through that crack too. So it looks kind of cool regardless. All right, so let's have a look at some of the specs. All right, weighing in just under seven pounds, six pounds, 15.8 ounces. Our net width is 1.69. And at the 12th fret, a 2.09. Neck depth at the first fret is 0.85, and at the 12th, a 0.99. And here's a look at our pickup readings on the bridge pickup. It's reading a 7.87. On the neck pickup, a 7.59. And in the middle, a 3.86. Here's a look at our neck profile. So just a nice rounded C and stays pretty consistent up to the 12th. So yeah, like I said before, this was a limited run for Guitar Center. So what bigger companies can do with Gibson is uh, they can decide on a model with a bunch of specific specs and then they make a bunch, uh, a short run or limited run for their store um, to get, you know, a unique guitar that people can only get at Guitar Center, for example. So yeah, I think this is a, a well specced out guitar. You've got a really rare, really cool looking finish. Um, the ebony board is really nice. Uh, the mother of pearl, different inlays is cool. Uh, it's just unique um, to have only the three inlays on the whole guitar and have that mother of pearl, which is cool. And uh, these do have a long neck tenon as well as the 490 R490T pickups, which are great and uh, the bone nut. So that would be all the unique specs for this model. There's our truss rod and uh, looks untouched, no thread showing, so that's good. This model has a bone nut, which is a very nice spec. There's a look at our ebony fingerboard. And I'm gonna polish the frets on this, I just haven't done that yet, but uh, they're in quite nice shape. There's no divots or wear anywhere in the Ebony board is nice and dark. And uh, yeah, it's missing a couple knobs, but I've got those on order, so those should arrive soon. And these are the 490R, 490T pickups, which is uh, an Elnico 2 magnet and uh, a little bit more of like a PAF style. Uh, apparently the Seymour Duncan Slash pickups are emulating these specific pickups. Um, so they sound really, really good. I have another special that uh, I had tried out and I really like the pickup sound. So yeah, there's our pickups, the 490 and the 4R and the T. And here's our route. So the route's nice and clean. We got a, a long neck tenon, which is nice. And we can see some of that red undercoat kind of shining through underneath the cool blue mist finish and yeah another route there everything looks nice and clean and as it should it's got the braided cables and here's a look at our control cavity so yeah everything looks stock it's using those disc capacitors there's our Gibson branded full-size pots and it looks like there's a, a build date on there with some initials. 
And uh, in this cavity we can really see the um, red paint underneath as well. Very nice route, no tear out, nice and clean. And there's our Switchcraft style switch. So yeah, everything looks as it should. The back of the guitar, it's got a couple little buckle worms and stuff like that. And uh, there's a chip there. So that's what I mean, like uh, when the chip goes in this guitar, you're gonna be able to see that red undercoat. So it's gonna age really cool. And uh, neck is nice and clean. No dings or anything there. So here's a look at why I got this guitar so ridiculously cheap. So this guitar had a crack in the headstock. So when I picked it up, this 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 had taken a tumble. Uh, the owner wasn't quite sure what had happened to it. He got it like this. But uh, when you put pressure in the neck, the crack would flex open. So what I did is I took it home and I put it on some clamps and I gradually increased the clamp pressure to open up that crack. Um, once it was open as far as it would go, it was starting to creak and like make further cracks. Like I opened that up as far as it could go. I took some syringes and injected glue into the crack. As far as it could go, I just kept putting more and more glue in just to make sure that the entire, the entirety of the crack was covered in glue. And then I took off all the machine, or I, beforehand I had taken off all the machine heads and clamped it between two pieces of MDF. Uh, and then I made sure I had really good squeeze out all over the crack. So when I put the clamps on, a bunch of glue came out. So that tells me that there was a lot of glue inside that crack. And then when I clamped it down, it should have distributed evenly throughout the crack. Um, then I left it on the clamps for 48 hours and took it off. I did a couple tests, just really reefing on the neck just to make sure that there was nothing opening up or moving. And then it ended up closing super nicely. Like you can't even feel a ridge hardly where the crack used to be. And then I just covered it up um, over the crack with a couple drops of lacquer just to seal the crack so in case no other moisture or anything else can get in so now you can feel the tiny ridge where the lacquer is but it's uh, super stable and it's smooth and nice and closed and it's not crazy noticeable but it's kind of cool that it shows that red underneath too so i'm going to keep this guitar because uh, i really like the color so i mean that crack really doesn't bother me but it was nice to be able to get a really, really good discount on this guitar because of that crack and, you know, it being relatively easy to fix. All right, let's just take a look at our setup here. So using the notch straight edge, we can see that there's just a tiny bit of relief in the neck. So that's how I like it. Just a little bit of relief so I can get those, the action nice and low. And then over at our nut, the action is, if we just uh, hit the third fret, we can see that the string is resting very gently on that first fret. So that means that the truss rod is set with uh, pretty straight and the nut is cut very nicely. So we've got great action here at the nut. And then so at the 12th fret, our action at the low E is a 1.5. And our action at the high E is just about a one. So that's exactly where I like to set all my guitars, 1.5 on the low E and one at the high E. And uh, this one is set up like that nicely and uh, there's no buzz, which I'll show. So yeah, you can see the, the finish matches my favorite snark very nicely. So yeah, uh, no buzz or fretting out anywhere and uh, nice low action, just the way I like it. All right, let's go ahead and plug it in and see how this 490R, 490T pickups sound. All right, we're plugged into the One True King rig.
Alright, that's enough of that. Uh, yeah, blatant 60 cycle hum ripoff, that whole graphic idea. Uh, anyway, if you're not familiar with the one true king rig, it's uh, my modified 65 Deluxe Reverb. We did a speaker swap, uh, a bright switch mod, a couple other things. You can check out my other videos if you want to see what we did to it. I'm also using a Carl speaker soak attenuator. And uh, we've got the amp set at about four and a half, trebles at four and a half, basses at four and a half, reverbs at two and a half. And we're just gonna try the amp clean, or the guitar clean, and then with a little bit of dirt. So let's go ahead. All right, so I'm on the bridge pickup. Let's try the bridge clean here. <laughs> Back to the bridge, I'm going to try some strumming. Back to the neck. stuff uh, I'm back in the bridge sounds great clean uh, we just did another SG just very recently and uh, this sounds very similar there's the same kind of pickups it's a different era but very close to the same sound uh, and uh, it's great so I'm gonna go ahead and try it with a little bit of distortion now to the bridge.
I'm really digging the bridge position on this. It's got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, spank to it, and um, it's not too harsh. I, I like the neck pickup too. So here's an example of the neck. both really nice tones. I'm gonna to go ahead and throw a little fuzz on this just for fun. Final thoughts on the 2008 SG Special Limited Edition from Guitar Center. Yeah, I'll be keeping this one. Uh, not only did I get an insane price on this guitar, but uh, you know, I've been looking for an SG for a while and this one kind of checks all the boxes for me. It's got a really cool color, I really like it. Um, it's got an ebony fingerboard, which I really like. Um, I really like the very Simplified fretboard with just the three dots. I think that looks really cool. And uh, yeah, the pickups sound great. Um, the action is nice and low. Uh, I might even get it crazy low by doing a full fret level on this and just getting it like ridiculous and put some eights on here or something. I think that would be fun to do. Also, I was thinking about modifying just a little bit, just the aesthetics of it. I think this would look really cool with like a cream guard maybe some pickup covers, maybe swap the uh, poker chip to a cream. So uh, maybe we can experiment with some parts and just kind of mod this a little bit, um, just to make it, you know, my own. But anyway, uh, yeah, very happy with this guitar. Sounds great, feels great, plays great, looks great. And uh, I'm keeping it. So anyway, yeah, that's going to be it for today. Thanks for tuning in to Beckler Guitars and Repair, and I hope you have a good one, and I'll have more for you really soon. Thanks a lot.